He just brought up a good point. He mm -hmm. asked me if there was ever going to be a passage over to the new side. Mm -hmm. The final plan shows that there's going to be a passage from the front door that enters the other side. So you're uh -huh. going to turn left for one and right for the other. That okay. makes sense why he wants our switch leg over there. <laughs> Hey, so we are downtown Indianapolis working for the first time with our new buddy Nate. First, how'd we get this gig? Well, connect with good people and tell them you're hungry for more work. Like straight up, just tell them. Hey, we've got capacity. If you know of anybody who's got opportunity, I'd love it if you connected us. So, a buddy connected me and Nate. I was down here eight weeks ago, quoted the job up for him. He said, boom, let's rock. So this is the first time with Handy on Time, building out a yoga studio downtown. This is a multi-day project for Jefferson Electric. We've got seven to eight team members here today. Let's take a look inside. I'll give you the overview, and hopefully you'll learn something along with us today. So I'm here in the reception area. We've got the plans on the wall behind us. We always bring our own set of plans to a job like this, because we want to mark them up in detail as built with the reality, because the architects have done a decent job but there are a lot of missing pieces like switch legs and exact switch locations and they're just kind of generic. They're kind of generic. So we're gonna pin it all down on our own set of paper plans. And that's gonna be the final redlined as-built document. Power and lighting in here. Moving on to the yoga room. Here's the hallway. Here's the yoga studio. Back here is the most important part. It's the electrical mechanical room. So this is the electrical mechanical room. We've got a tinkless water heater, a data rack, furnace, and the all important electrical panel will be coming out of here. This is right on the other side of the yoga studio. So short run for home runs, lights, heaters. There's a lot of, well, there's a lot of cleanup. So the change orders are gonna come today in the form of, oh, look at all this crap wire we found above the ceiling that was improperly terminated and unsupported. And so that's, that's where the change orders are gonna come in. Let me show you our electrical conduit. How big of a run is this? That, my friends, is an EMT elbow crafted for the modern electrician. So how do you manage all the complexities of a business on a daily basis? I'm gonna to recommend to you, if you're a small contractor, operator, the Marquette app. This is an all-encompassing, extremely cost-effective, no-brainer, user-friendly decision. Let me walk you through one aspect that I think is hypercritical. Typically, an early contractor has zero CRM, zero lead nurturing, zero system, no system, zero, none, for handling leads and inquiries. So check it out. Here's an inquiry. I'm gonna create a lead. Contact name is Joe. Email, that's easy. Joe at blow.com. Address, maybe I don't have an address, right? Maybe this is somebody I'm courting, cater, trying to cater to. Lead source and a family and friends referral. Those are the best. You get the key to the backdoor comments. Could be a million dollar account. Stay in front. Check. All right, notified by email. Well, Text, I wanna be on this one. I wanna respond, respond. All right, check it. He's now a lead source. What do I do with that lead source? Hmm, now I'm exploring. This is literally my first time to touch the inquiries by Marquette. Filter by status. I want all my leads. Lead date, lead name, okay. So you've got good search, I mean, because at some point you're gonna have two, three hundred leads in this list. So the ability to filter and search is key. So now I've got my leads entered. People I don't want to forget, like this man, Nate. I want to do a bunch more work with him. So I'm going to go to my lead, Joe. I'm going to call Joe, email Joe, text Joe right through the app. And in addition to that, I can also convert him to a customer, create an estimate, or schedule an appointment with him. So now I have all my best targets, like Nate, in the app in one place where I can see them, track them, interact with them, and convert them from prospect 
to customer. Now that's management. Don't try to do it on paper. Come on, guys. Nate, thanks for having us on the job. Of course, of course. Appreciate of course. it. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for doing this. It's yeah. Great. We're happy to. It's what we do, right? Yeah. Well, hey, call for the best. Yeah. <laughs> I can't help but notice what's behind us here. Can you tell us more about this? Correct. So uh, this is called, in the familiar American market, it's called Shishugiban. The real name of it is actually Yoki Shugi. It's a siding, cedar siding process that what you do is you burn it, you char it real well. Uh, there is obviously different stages for the charring of it, and then you seal it in order not to get all the suet on your hand. You can get it cleaned up with water after you do that. Uh, you seal it with the flooring sealer. There is numerous ways to do it. It all depends on what you would like to get if you're doing it indoor or outdoor. Uh, this piece of boards, each one of those are roughly around $120, every single one of them. They made those in Texas, however, once again, you can do it at home, it's not that hard. Uh, you can always reach out to our man right here and he will give you my info and I can give you some uh, pointers how to do it. Other than that, uh, don't know really what to say about it, it's a great decorative product. It will last forever. If you use this on a siding, it will last forever because it doesn't rot. Once again, it's a burnt cedar. So it will keep the bugs away and also have a nice little smell for it. And beautiful look. Yeah, that is really pleasant. It's very Correct. subtle. I'd put that inside my house. It's not overpowering. It's not like, Correct. oh, did someone burn the popcorn? Yeah. That's right, that's right. A lot of people use cedar in closets and things like that because it's, uh, it push away the bugs. So you don't mm -hmm. have moth or spiders actual closet but yeah for this specific application we're using this as that our texture wall uh, we're gonna have our sign in here it's gonna look pretty nice and neat man Nate's a good guy I'm gonna drop his website in the description he's a high integrity high relationship high touch contractor in Indianapolis for any and all of your needs Thank thanks you. Nate thank you so much yeah appreciate Pleasure. it today we're pre-wiring for a hot yoga studio going in we're gonna have heaters all throughout the studio itself to make the room warm enough. We're gonna have low voltage lighting going in. It's 24 volt lighting that's gonna be recessed in the drywall. We're at the rough end stage, so everything's just gonna be wiring um, for pre-wire for our finish out. We have a receptionist area that's going in that's gonna be full build. It's not standing yet, but we're gonna do some pre-wiring for that as well. And that'll be what we're getting to. This job is chaotic because I have a lot of hands and less plans beforehand at the moment. So I'm trying to catch up between all our heavy hitters out here getting it done. Hey, can I get your opinion on something, guys? We, moved, we shifted this over a little bit so it's not directly in the middle. What do you think about these hanging lights going there, where that line is? The middle was 27, I believe, and then we shifted it to 25, so it's not so close to the... Now this area is fine, but it's this area down here that it's... Yeah, 25 is going to be close. And if they got big tendons that don't come past that, then they're not going to... They're going to hit there. So. Right. Well, I'm not worried about this side. I'm worried about this side, because it's a lot bigger down there. So you want to... Yeah. Let's bring it a couple of inches over. I would do that. Yeah. This? Really? Is that 25? That's 25, yeah. Uh, 27 is the middle, middle, I think. You don't have anything, you don't have a door or anything down there to go off of either. Where's well, he the... Wants it, he wants it off away from the duck. Yeah, a little bit. Like the guy, like, like the GC. He wants it off. Probably. Oh yeah, just bump it this way, like. Well, that's not the middle. That's 25. We already bumped it out. Yeah, we bumped it out two inches. I'll bump it again. Two, another two inches probably? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do 23. So here's the problem. That is in the center of this hallway. So wherever we shoot the line, we don't want to be in the center of that light. We want to be four inches off that light. So if we get a measurement up there, mark 23 inches off this wall, just like we did down there. So we have a, sh well, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. It's not going to line up with that light, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. You want me to measure what the center of that light is? 
center of that is 27. Because I did it, I put it in the middle of this hallway here. So in other words, we're probably just gonna have to extend that box out to 23 or whatever it is I put down there. What's that? Yeah, this one will probably just have to come over a little bit so it lines up with these coming down here. You know what I mean? Because these ones are gonna be offset of this one down here. Yeah, 23 and then we'll line it up with that line. All right, so I need to go another inch over. Okay, so 24 inches. All right, tell, tell Alex to pull it off 24 inches. Hey Alex, pull it off 24 inches instead of 23. It's 24 by um, 24 by like 29 or something. Hey, 39 and an eight. 39 and an eight. Be 39 probably. This is what's current, so that way you know where to put everything during the planning stage. He just brought up a good point. He mm -hmm. asked me if there was ever going to be a passage over to the new side. Mm -hmm. The final plan shows that it's going to be a passage from the front door that enters the other side. So you're uh -huh. going to turn left for one and right for the other. That makes okay. sense why he wants our switch leg over there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Now we're all on the same page. Yep. He asked the question. I learned something. What about that light in there? It's already existing, I would, I, I would suppose. Okay. Okay. Because as of right now, that's their current entry over there. Over there. Right. Okay. Cool. So that makes sense. Yeah, that does so make sense. So we want to stay as right as possible then. Yeah, so where, form. yeah, so where I'm, was talking about. Yes, sir. Cool. I like it. That works. So it, originally we should have divided by eight. But if we take both the lights off at the end, we should have We're divided by five, six. Right. So we need to, we need to go to six. To go to so six. Do I did do that and I was like, that looks right there, but it was 82, it was 82 yeah. I was like, that looks that more, means, that means yeah, it's 82 and a half, roughly. 82 and three eighths, 82.6. Nah, a little more, probably three eighths. We had divided by the wrong number of lights and realized whenever we got to the end, it wasn't spacing out correctly. So we divided by the right number of lights and I think it's gonna work out now. Right now, these fine gentlemen are getting power down to a GFI that we're cutting in. We're up against a metal stud they're having to drill through at the top plate in order to get up and over the drop ceiling to steal power from the other side of the bathroom. Yeah? Nice. I'm just gonna be installing two, two gang boxes right here for some switches. So I gotta use this um, strapping material to go from metal stud to metal stud. This bracket will contain those two boxes nice and neat and uniform. And that, that way we can go from metal stud to metal stud in a commercial application. <laughs> Come in, you can hit that light switch and it'll be, be good. Well, the guys are looking good. And I'd say that's a successful day. Hey, if you're working on a project like this or anything, running your business and there's complexity, you'd like some help, e-protocol, check the description. You and I will go live, we'll chat it through together. If you're a customer in Central Indiana, think about hiring Jefferson Electric for your needs. And subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.